The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Hello everyone, Charles Chapman. This is the Tiger Technicians Hour for Friday, the 19th of August. And we are looking at the S&P. This is the E-mini right now, down 43. Did very nice in peak D is the Chapman Wave Methodology, buy signal to buy mode. That's a minimum, minimum target. And in this particular instance, what we're looking at here is from the low that was made back at about 8.25 this morning when peak ABCD and the one-minute E-mini chart above the 200 period moving average, it had hung around there for ages. Well, it tested it and pulled back. So another buy signal at about 9.05 went to where? To a peak D. Then there was a, a six bars of consolidation. It retested that exact high. But look at the vertical lines. Look at the MACD and stochastic. Uh, at that high of 9.30, and then look at it again at 9.37-ish, uh, much, much weaker. And then what happened? We did a left side, right side price time match to the bottom, took it out under the 200 period moving average, went down, and now we're trying to come off the low of 42, about 42, uh, 35, 36, and we're trading at uh, 42, 44. And if you look at the five-minute chart, look what happened. Peak A, peak B, peak C, peak D, and then it ran up to an E just under the 200 period moving average. Took a dive, fell back, and now it's trying to rally some. All right, got that out of the way. This is Technical Friday. A couple of things we want to look at. Let me just run all the numbers now. We'll do that real quickly. We're looking at uh, the Dow down 231 at 33,766. This is the third day after the top that was made at peak F slash C. It's still an alternate count. There's enough residual strength to say, you know what, you could bounce it. You're probably not going to make anything much more than maybe if you do go higher, it'll just be a nominal new uh, recovery high, but then you come back down again. In other words, to answer a question that came up, yes, I, I am far more positive but I'm far more positive because of the weekly chart, the daily chart for about a week now. I've been saying choppy, choppy, choppy into this period of August. I'm anticipating some kind of a pullback and then a lot of choppiness, maybe going into next week, maybe even the last week. Uh, um, what is this? Uh, August, August, August. 31st is Wednesday, a week from the coming Wednesday. Yeah, so a, a very choppy period. And then how we come out of it from any signals that – how? Let me put it as simply as I can. I'm looking at the daily chart, and for those of you who did my webinar Wednesday a week ago, um, you know that what I was looking at is I talked about, I spoke very uh, uh, throughout the webinar often, I kept talking about what happens at a potential top, why you can have an alternate count, and it's not saying, oh, you could go up, but you could go down. I mean, anybody could do that. What it's saying is everything is still positive. The 9 is way above the 14. The price even now, down 264, is still above the green 9 period moving average of, what is that, 30, 33,641. Um, that's way above 33,383, the 14 period moving average. And that's above the 200 period moving average of 33,204. They've all crossed uh, <laughs> positively. But... That doesn't mean to say we aren't in an overbought condition. And the on-balance volume is telling me that this is the only indicator that's saying, well, be careful. In fact, this morning I changed. I, I usually say to yourself, don't change it. You thought it through. Why are you going to make a change? But I changed for a couple of reasons. One is I was going to institute yesterday, and then I thought I'd do it today. But I needed to let the day unfold. I need to see how the MACD handles this particular pullback and the stochastic, which is at 87%, both of them very positive. So I had, I wanted to, do, we are along the diamonds, we're taking a little bit off to, to, to um, take profits on the way up. And we've had really good gains, got most of the move from the very low that was made in the Dow back in June. Uh, but most importantly, I was going to add the DOG. That's one to one short. I thought maybe two times short. I said, no. I don't want to buy the DOG at the open today. 
I want to see if there's a, a, some kind of a move to the upside. And I don't want to get out of my diamonds. We're in such a fantastic position. I, we won't get that. I don't think we're going back to that start of the June low in this particular pullback that I'm anticipating based on the weekly chart. So I'm very cautious. The daily charts. I love the action in the weekly charts. It says that at 33,745, 33,600, maybe in 33,030, sorry, 32,690 uh, is the, uh, is the, is that the green? Yep, that's the green. It just turned green today, yesterday. So let's see if the green nine period moving average above the weekly 14 period moving average is going to stay green by the end of the day. And that is all suggesting to me, with the MACD strong stochastic at 74%, that the weekly is finally in play. You know how I talk about time frames? You go from the 120 minute chart to the daily, the daily to the weekly, weekly to the monthly. That's why we are still long the dollar, in fact. But that's not the issue. The issue right here is I'm anticipating choppiness. Choppiness is not a major sell signal. I just don't have any of the ingredients right now to say major sell signal. So get out of every everything and go short. I just don't. It might happen, but I don't have it right now. Right. So the most important thing that I'm looking at right now is I'm looking at a, some kind of a, a cup formation, how we can bounce from the cup low, wherever that is, back towards the uh, 34,000 millennium level is going to be important. Um, and that's it. So I took off my DOG trade and I thought I'd just implement uh, no change in the diamonds. We'll keep that. This is just to ameliorate any downside move. And I thought, you know, I've got to see how it plays out today. I, I know that I might have missed the best opportunity yesterday. So today buying at the open, which would have been about the price that we're at now, I just didn't feel comfortable with that. And the other is I was going to take off our entire first position of our three times long the Qs, the TQQQ. We got the second position lower down. That's the one that's really that gave a 50% gain. But that's not the issue. The issue is the second one has had fabulous gains. I was going to say, let's just get rid of it completely. And then I thought, you know, look at the QQQ. Well, I'll get there. Let me just do the S&P right now. The S&P at this particular point is down 46 at 42.37, and it's going to turn, probably turn into an F and not an F slash B uh, because it's it hasn't pulled back enough yet, but it's it's starting to pull back quite sharply. The day is young. Anything can happen. Op options expiration. So that's what I'm looking at right now, and I'm saying, okay, the, we don't have any position in the S&P. The 200-period uh, moving average of 41.92, yep, that could be in play. That's a 40-point pullback. Um Nothing wrong with that. You had a fabulous look at that weekly chart, leg B. Everything there is positive. I wanted to hold out for the day to see what would happen. Um, I could still get rid of all that, and then we'll just have the one position, which is just fine. As uh, no, we had two positions, and we've been taking little bits off on the way up, and I have no problem at all. And probably it would have been best with a nice gain on a percentage basis from the open today or at the moment when I, in my trader's corner, I sent out a message saying, take it off. But no, I'm still okay with that. I still think there's enough residual strength that uh, I need to hold it just a little while longer. So now we go to the QQQ. We've got a break coming up. Now the Qs are under the 200 period moving average. This is starting to hint that it could be a G and not a C. And therefore, we've got to be a little more careful. And the weekly chart is being repelled at the resistance. I'll be back. Dow's down to soon. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. 
Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi folks, and we're looking at the IWM. This is the Russell iShares uh, ETF 2000, Russell Small Caps. Joining at 105.04, down 385. I've called this a doji candle peak F. So the, the others almost certainly are going to be that uh, uh, higher letter. So in the meantime, uh, it's going to 195.02, and it's getting close to both the 14 and the 200-period uh, exponential moving averages, but that weekly chart has improved tremendously. So here we go. We've got gold. Uh, gold is down um, 6 at 1764. Uh, the GDX is trading at 2547. Just need to check something out. I don't want to speak out of turn. Uh, yeah, that is a peak C. And the gold made a peak. Look at this. Gold made a peak. Where did that go? Let me just put it again. Put it in there. And there it is. Okay, gold made a peak D. And it's pulled back pretty sharply from the Chapman Way uh, fourth highest peak. And the left side, right side price time match didn't quite get to the left side high that was in July that we were looking at. Now it's pulling back, but most importantly, and it's just silver because people look at gold and silver together. That was that's a peak F, and that is definitely. I done this yesterday. I said silver is acting. It had a fabulous move from the 18 to the 20, uh, 20 and a half area, and now it's down at 19. This is not good action at all, both in the daily, the weekly, and definitely the monthly. We're looking at. I'll do this as well. High grade copper. High grade copper is holding pretty well at 3.661. Looks like it's trying to make a leg D uh, in the three, just over 3.70. We'll see if it can do that. And uh, let's see wood, because this is the global uh, ice shares of the timber and forestry EDF. Uh, peak C, this is a peak uh, C right now, holding quite well. So if copper and uh, copper and the ice shares, the global, uh, copper's global, and the ice shares wood is the symbol for the ice shares of the timber and forestry ETF, holding very well, that's kind of at least a shorter term good sign that I'm looking at. Now what I'm also going to go to is the dollar. And the dollar is having a really strong move to the upside. This is a leg B. It broke out of the Chapman Wave inside track repellent uh, zone. It's now propellant zone. Even more importantly is that monthly chart held so well. The nine period, look, it hasn't closed under the weekly nine period moving average. Uh, let's see. 
it, it hasn't actually really closed since it broke above it back in 2022. That's um, that must have been February. Yeah, around about February the fourth at 90 between 95 and 97. Here it is at 107. And as I said before, I have no intention of taking anything else off the dollar at this particular point. We've been long while well, we've been long since 2018. You could call that a fairly long term trade. Certainly for us, it's an, it is a Rip Van Winkel trade almost. And uh, what we're looking at is it could start to stall, make a cup formation. 109.29 uh, was the high. This is the, in the dollar index at seven on the 19th of July. So that so far, the dollar is acting really well. And I've said all along that there are a couple of reasons why I like the dollar. But the most important thing about the dollar, the reason why we're still holding on, is it's an icon. It is the emblem. It is the... Uh, the the uh, the trophy in the currency area of the world, and that's all. And it says that the, the U.S. economy is still doing better than most of the other economies, and therefore it's holding very very well. If you look at the euro, it's just had the reversal. EUR USD had a peak C. It's fell. It's almost like the GDX pulling back sharply. If you're looking at the USD JPY, that is the uh, euro dollar currency. The yen currency pair, only a leg C to the upside. Looks like it wants to try to challenge at 136. Uh, the next resistance is in the 137.50 to 138.38 area. So here we are. Okay. And uh, I want to finish up with uh, two things. That's the crude oil. Oh, I, I got three things, crude oil and natural gas. So crude oil right now. There we go, CL. Uh, doing quite nicely. It's up uh, 64 cents at 90.75. It's treated the 200 period moving average as a propellant in the very short term. The weekly chart says, wow, you are so close because that rectangle for me, you remember that whole webinar, including rectangles, large rectangles and narrow rectangles. This arch formation, the dreaded H pattern has held so far in the um, crude oil weekly chart. Monthly chart is looking okay. At this particular point, so it's really important for crude. If crude oil starts trading under 84 or at in the 84s, that's a big problem because it's under really important support. All right, let's go to the TL. Oh, I said crude oil, three things. Oh, natural gas. Natural gas made a peak D two days ago, and it's really holding pretty well. Um, there is this double top potential here in the. Weekly, but the weekly is in a leg B. I have no other way to count it. And that just says it should go to a C and a D. I like natural gas for, for this particular quarter of 2022. In this third quarter, I like natural gas. Let's see where that goes. In the meantime, back at the ranch, we have to look at bonds. U.S., there it is. Bonds made a peak E top. Uh, just under the 200 period moving average, around about 146 is trading at 138 right now. That's not a good sign because if you look at the TNX.X, there we go, that is in leg A, B, C, D, E. Ooh, ooh, ooh. This is the yields. Still way below the high that was made, but it is rising rather than falling. And I think that's another issue here that says there's another reason to, to with the dollar rallying and the yields rallying it's another reason why you can say being cautious here is just prudence that's all it, it really it just makes sense to be we've raised cash again uh we had some experimental buys uh, uh, over the last week that hasn't worked out i don't mess around they, they've gone much lower than they were those particular instrument uh, instruments that we had not interested i gave it a chance it didn't want to accept, <laughs> accept my chance now I had a question about on uh, this is on Semiconductor Corporation Intelligence Sensing Data and Power Solutions. It made a leg G slash B. So I, I got a question here. Hi, hello, Basil. I've enjoyed your show for many years and was wondering if you had a target price to sell on ON, on technology, uh, on semiconductor. Uh, let's see. Uh, I bought on a year and a half ago in the low 40s. Congratulations. I mean, that is hmm, great. Uh, let's see. Uh, it looks like on monthly chart is in leg D. Well, there it is, leg D. Yep, absolutely correct. With the daily one in leg B and a weekly in leg A. 
So leg A. Now the reason why let's just go through this as technical Friday. So let's just go through this. I love the stock. I love the fact that some of these semiconductor, the the semiconductors that you don't hear about all the time, like on, like S P N S. Oh, did I just say S N S N P S? Synopsis. Oh yeah yeah. S N P S S N P S. I mean, look at that. Big move down. It is 391.14. But here again, what is it? It made a beautiful cup formation in the uh, in the weekly chart. I should call this E slash B, just to be absolutely correct in my notation in the Chapman wave. E slash B. And another one that I looked at the other day was Wolf. Also in the set. So this is Synopsis Electronic Design Automation Semiconductor. And we've got Wolf. And I'll be right back. Wolf is trading also down just a little bit. I'll be back and we'll talk about on. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Uh, well, so we're back, and what I wanted to say is Wolf, which is uh, Wolf Speed uh, Inc. It's a, a symbol I'd seen so many times. But just the other day, I did a whole analysis of it in Chapway methodology. Um, it made a peak, uh, all time high peak at 142.33 back in November of last year, then plummeted down to the uh, 60 level. I mean, more than a more than a 50 percent decline. Now, what we're looking at is this: within the context of the gap up and holding the gap, that's good. And the reason why we are still holding our semiconductor long three times long position, even though we're taking little bits off, and we want to add to it on any major pullback uh, in a, in a sp specific way is because some of these, um, I don't want to call them peripheral uh, semiconductor companies. These are major companies, but they aren't in the media. They aren't mentioned all the time, are telling me that there's a really good chance that a lot of the problems in this particular phase 
for particular companies in the semiconductors that are actually starting to resolve their problems. That, that, that's my thinking. I have no real evidence other than little things, that snippets I pick up. So within that context, let's go back to ARM. So the question wasn't what, well, you know, what should I do? It's what, what my target is, et cetera. What I am going to say is this. So um, Anne-Marie says, um, uh, on, so yes, you're correct calling that a B in the daily chart and it is beautiful. What was the stock? Oh, 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 oh. TDR. I wrote it down somewhere. NTR. Was it NTR? NTR. Yes, you remember the pattern I said the Shamway falling axe formation in a very quick time frame gives you a nice big breakout that I was expecting that leg D and NTR and Ravine Limited. Uh, that could turn into a peak D and it should start to pull back. Well, on con semiconductor had uh, three, uh, actually almost four of these patterns right here. And I did that yesterday and it broke out. So this is, you can call it leg B. I'm being a little conservative. Because the MACD hasn't crossed negative yet, it deflected higher, but it's starting to show signs that it could be a little toppy. So I'm calling it right now G slash B with nothing to do. However, that's not what you asked me. You said, which time frame should I pay the most attention to? Thanks in advance, Anne-Marie. So I love that question. And the question is, in the big context, this breakout there's no other way that I can call this. Let me just check that out before I even talk about it. I'd already notated on conductor, semiconductor. Yes. <clears throat> so the start of this buy mode in the um, in the weekly chart of on semiconductor was back in July of 2021, around about 34. And you, it's, it's fantastic. You got in just near the bottom. Beautiful. And then it had this beautiful move to leg E, then a peak E with the MACD deflecting. That means it touched the 200, the sorry, nine period differential, the green line touched the red line, slow moving average, 26 period moving average, and then deflected back up again. So that says to me, in the daily chart, since it's got this pattern, and then it went on to an E and then had a sharper pullback. But I've got this as an A. I should tell you, I know it looks absolutely weird because F would say, oh, watch out. And A says, are you kidding? Any pullback you want to buy. But in the in the notation, this is not necessarily the start of a new buy signal, buy mode. Everything else about it tells us that it should be because it broke to a new recovery high above the 70.26 high of the week of July the 7th, 2022. But that's your starting point. And as long as you've got your starting point, you can have this isolated long-term move suddenly to the upside, but they continue the notation that was made earlier on. That's just like a heads up for people who are already used to this. They understand that that can happen. It's not like, oh, my God. No, that's just the way it is. I'm, I'm just trying to be as conservative as possible, saying be careful of those. This accent is beautifully, in fact, I should put a buy, an up arrow. Yep, I have to. It's at 91%. Everything about it. So it would be a complete failure if this uh, buy, um, buy signal to buy mode up arrow doesn't, in fact, take you uh, to a pullback and then a B and then a C. This means for 2022, this is really good action. It'll completely be not good action if it closes under, say, 61 anytime through September. If you see that, then I have to consider it was an F. At this point, I'm considering it an A. So what is the time frame? The time frame, the best time frame is always the monthly, because if you are still in a buy mode waiting for a D and everything is technically good, now you're in leg D. You haven't got peak D yet. Now you look at this potential and look at this. If I do a vertical trend line move from the 7th of January of 2022 at 70.26, to even right now, look, the MACD is way lower, but it's strengthening. The stochastic is actually higher at 91%. The nine period is way over the 14. I have no reason to even think about anything else other than this is a good stock with good technicals, going to all-time highs. I think it's all-time high, but going to at least multi-year highs. This is really good. Now let's go to the daily. Why am I saying it's G slash B? In this environment, 
with so many so many stocks are potentially making a higher letter together with a lower letter as an alternate count, there are a number of things that will change that. If at any point in the next week or two, uh, as on goes from the high that was made yesterday of 75.15 or something, what was that? 75.20, uh, 70, 75.26. Um, if it starts to trade for a little while under 65, that's six points lower, then I'm saying, oh, that's a G, watch out, take, take, take some time, um, and that's all. So your question was, which is the most important time frame? In the short term, obviously, the 120-minute chart, I didn't even do that. Let me just check that out. 120-minute chart, I'll try to do it quickly here because nothing ever is quick. Okay, it went to P, A, B, C, D, E, F. Okay. So that's suggesting that it's holding really well considering where it went to, but I have to call it an F for now in the 120 minute chart. So just be a little careful. So in the very short term, I'd be watching the daily. In the long term, the weekly holding in the stochastic above 91%, as long as it holds above 86, 87% for the next week or two, that's going to be a really good sign. The big picture was the monthly and the monthly has gone to leg D and is still holding very well. So in your big picture, you want to get buy modes that are going to lead from daily to weekly and finally to the monthly, and the monthly then should go to at least a D. You're getting leg D. You haven't got a peak D. The weekly chart is holding very well. The daily is your near-term position to watch. You don't ask me what to do, and all I say when you get to this particular point, when you add a potential, at least a short-term top, is if you're a little nervous, hey, maybe take a little bit off to make yourself comfortable. I don't see anything wrong with this right now. On semiconductor trading down one at 72.14, I like it very much, even if it does pull back some. And it's been on my list to buy, but I, I just never got it. I, I just, I, I kept looking at it and saying, nah, not now, not now. So that's it. Okay, next question came in. Vale, uh, Vale is a valet or Vale is uh, iron ore pellets, nickel, copper, ferro alloys, et al., et cetera. Made a Chapman Wave 2 bar reversal in the monthly chart at PC at 23.18. Pull back sharply to just over 10, cut, cut in half. Goes back up to the 21-ish area. Pulls back sharply again, makes a peak E in the, in the weekly chart. And it looks to me like it's still weak. And I'm just going to say that I would hold off on Bayer. I, I say it's a, always a great company when, when, when steel stocks and anything in that area starts to rally sharply right now, it's just stuck a lowercase h into a lowercase m pad at 12. Uh, let's look at it again if it hits 12, 10, 11.9. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call Newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call Newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. 
Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. All right, so I just got a thing here that says Fidelity, MACD, the moving average convergence divergence signals. Um, caution for stocks. Um, I don't see that at all. Uh, not based on the MACD. Other things are saying to me, just on a short-term basis, caution. The MACD, yes, is close to uh, crossing negative, uh, but it's still positive and it's still acting very well. Um, that would just be one signal. It just says, actually, uh, what is it? signals, did they say caution? I guess I can agree with that. Yep, yep, okay, I'm going <laughs> to agree with that. All right, so in a den, um, um, I did a, a week B is E. What, 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 A, V, A, V, E, O. Oh, you're absolutely correct. Yes, yes, I didn't see it. I did The only obligation in the chapter wave is to count each successor be higher peak or trough, lower trough correctly, and I missed it. Sorry, Dan. E, yes, leg E. So it's getting a little extended in the Chapman Wave weekly chart, AVEO, we're looking at right now, uh, is a symbol, and that's uh, AVEO Pharmaceuticals. Uh, yes, nice. You see what I do with this big green candle? I, I'm sorry, this long-legged doji candle with the day's young. But normally what I would do is I grab the outer bars, and I just put in a rectangle and say, hey, you should be trading inside there for a little bit longer, and then maybe if you close above the high, the wicks high, that's the high of about 823 um, on a weekly basis next week. That's really good. And if you pull back, then the doji, we don't know where it's going to close, but it's a 771. If you close under 771 at any point, 7071 then becomes your resistance area. And watch out for the low that was made somewhere around 7, what, 20 or something like that. Okay. So here we go. I had promised myself, and, and Jack in the Den said, um, uh, Investors Business Daily has on as almost a breakout. But you know what's interesting? For a, a couple of days now, I've had, if I can just get that right now, there it is. Got it. I've had Investors Business Daily lists that I've been wanting to actually go through every day, and I just got so busy with other things. Just the list of IBD uh, top 50 stocks. There it is, CLFD, NFE, CLH, SWAV, CRK, and the CF. We have, we have at least two of these, right? I didn't even realize right now. In the first six, we have two of these as longs for some time. So I was going to do this completely independent of that because I kept getting questions about, well, when you look at when you look at investors daily, which I actually don't do every day, even though I I so must get in the newspaper for what is it, eight years and long now many years now, they I, it's just not around I, I, close by. I used to just pick one up. I didn't get it delivered every day, but I got it for years since 1985 or something like that. Then they went electronic. I'm not that good at electronic, just going through newspapers. I like to have the newspaper in front of me for this esoteric thing. So here we go. So. Um, CLFD, that's your first one. CLFD, look at this. CLFD trading right now at 121. It's making a leg D, a possible peak D. It almost looks like the on chart, right? Look at this spectacular leg D in the weekly chart. Clearfield Inc., I forgot to see what they do. And whatever they do, it's very, 
very successful. So right now you get into this choppy and it's got almost, I usually start off saying, well, this could be the Chapman Wave uh, stalk leg formation. You're making an oval pattern here, but the oval pattern can also at some point become a top. Why is it not working? Yeah, there it is. Now I've got about 10 of them. Uh, all right, let's get rid of this one here. There it is. So this is a pattern consolidation formation right here. Um, and uh, the high of 123, uh, 32 yesterday. I can see a little bit more, but I can see it starting a consolidation phase. And I don't see this as a potential stalk leg. I actually see it more as an arch formation. Leg D weekly, leg E monthly. Um, okay, that's clear. Clearfield Inc. I meant to check out what they do. Um, NFE is the next one. NFE is new. F there we go. There it is. And I always stall to say what it is because I always want to say new foundry, but it's not. It's new fortress energy Inc. A shares natural gas fuel solutions. Uh, we've been long since the uh, 45s. Here it is. It's, it hits 62.79. And, and we've taken little bits off. It's at 57.67. That is a peak D, and it's pulling back in the day. Leg D in the weekly, leg C in the monthly, underneath the previous 65.90 high of January. Next question is, uh, where do, do I think it's going to go to? I think it's going to test the 55 to 54 level, and then we'll make a decision whether or not we're going to add back those positions we took off. Or maybe I'll just get out of it completely, but it's in the right area for now. C-L-H, C-E-L-H. <clears throat> Oh, in the den, someone said, uh, Todd says, see, uh, this is the um, Tiger, uh, Tiger, TFNN uh, YouTube. CYBN, I'll get to that. No, I'll do it right now. CYBN, look at this. <clears throat> Huge move to leg D this morning um, on Friday. Is that what he said? He's going to roar. Yep, it did roar. Now it's in D, uh, just sitting above the 200 period moving average of. 9.92, oh, 0 0.92, <laughs> trading at 0 0.95 or 5 cents. It hit 1.06, what a percentage gain. <clears throat> Excuse me. Leg B in the weekly chart. Yep, this is whatever it is. Uh, Cybern Inc. All right, well, we'll do a little bit more, more work. I'll just make a note of it right now. CYBN, we'll look at it again over the weekend. All right, let's get back to our story. We're looking at CELH. Let me see how many I can do before we get to the end of the show. Uh, this is a peak F, not an F slash C right now. See what happens with the alternate count. Uh, at some point, it resolves itself. So right now, I have to think it's still an F and it's consolidating at 98.000. Uh, it's underneath uh, the 200, under the 14 period moving average. It did make a peak C in the weekly. This should go to a leg D. So it could reinvigorate and then push above into the 110s, uh, 111, 112. And that will also help the cup formation. We've seen so many of these. This is in a monthly chart. So when you get to that level, you've got to start being a little careful because the all-time high was 110.22. Wow, we just missed it. 110.22. It went, I love these. We've been doing them for years now, looking at 101. 109.74. It just missed it by a dollar. Uh, it's amazing how many times, even daily, weekly, monthly, it doesn't matter. You come back in the cup formation. What happens? I mean, that webinar we did the other day, this is exactly what we were talking about. How do you deal with the, the you go from one point down, then back to that point. What happens at that point is important, or up to that point and then back down again. So CLH, I think I wrote down what it is. Nope, I didn't. CLH is... Um, oh, this is Celsius Holding Inc. Yeah, I mean, I followed the letter, the symbol for years. I just always forget. Oh, we got it. We got a caller. We got a caller. We got Mike in Ormond Beach. Mike, let's go. How are you? Hey, that's I'm doing pretty good. <clears throat> I heard part of your show in the beginning, and um, correct me if I'm wrong, but are you thinking that the June low, maybe the low? And then we're just going to get a, um, you know, a pullback that, you know, maybe we should buy. Uh, as, it stands, the okay, as, as it stands right now, I'll answer the question when we return. But as it stands right now, 
um, if you're looking at the Dow, uh, you can go all the way back down to 32,000, and I still would like the pattern. Under that, I have to start questioning it, but I, the answer is yes, but let's talk about it when we get back. Are you grinding in the market, but seeing little to no return? Or are you a successful trader, simply looking to make your job a little easier? Learn to take the path of least resistance with David White's powerful trading newsletter. David White is an accomplished trader whose deep understanding of technology and the markets allows him to consistently find and share winning trades. Support and resistance define the ranges in which stocks trade. By understanding these trading ranges, David White is able to find the path of least resistance. David White's trading newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, is delivered daily before the markets open to make every trading day an easy win. Visit TFNN.com today and subscribe to David White's Ultimate Trading Newsletter for $119 a month. And try all of our newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Take the path of least resistance at TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. I thought we go back to Mike in a moment. I just want to say that one minute e-mini, look at this. From 9.50 uh, this morning, you've been in this narrow re rectangle. This is the narrow. We were talking about the wide one before, but now comes the narrow one. And that says, this is okay but it needs to get to the 42.48 level. It's at 42.38 right now, and it has to do it fairly soon above the 200 period moving average because a close underneath 42.30 any time today would be a big negative. All right, let's get back. So, Mike, this is what I'm looking at. Within the context of all the different time frames, and you can see, uh, as someone mentioned, UNH almost at an all-time high, the, the United Health Group, the stocks that have been on fire, the ones that have already been working, in this particular up phase have continued. The ones that have been weak have had bounces, but now they could become uh, somewhat vulnerable again to some selling. But in the big picture, what I'm looking at is the weekly chart has gone from 29.653 to 34,281. Uh, uh, that is a really big move, a 5,000 point move. And I'm suggesting to you that Based on everything I'm looking at here, I do anticipate bad news. I think this is a very volatile period, and uh -huh. we've taken quite a bit off uh, just in terms of shorter-term trades. More importantly, we've raised cash, but I'm suspecting that we do get some kind of a pullback. Um, 
It needs to test the, the low 32,000s at some point. I don't know how soon it is. Maybe we get another big bounce at the end of August into September. But at the same time, the bigger picture, because the monthly is starting to improve, says that the low that was made in June is really an important low. I'm not saying it's okay. the low in this move, but I am saying it's a very significant low. And I, 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 I'm treating that as a kind of a fulcrum for the cup formation on the upside. How long we take to digest is going to be good. I hope that helps you. Yes, it does, Basil. Thank you. Have a great weekend. And you too. Thank you for calling, Mike. So, folks, uh, stay tuned. We've got great programming coming up. We've got a replay of uh, Steve's show that he did at 8 o'clock this morning. Uh, so that's going to be coming up. I'll do the news. And then Steve comes up with the recorded uh, show from earlier on. And then you've got uh, Think or Swim. You've got Larry Pesavento. You've got uh, Dave White and 